Hello friends and family and welcome to the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. I wanted to talk about sitting cross-legged today. Um, I think that this is a topic that gets a lot of attention. I have one friend who I keep suggesting, oh, you should take a Vipassana course, you should take a Vipassana course. And his response is, well, I'll, I'll learn how to sit cross-legged first. Um, he's Canadian, where like me, uh, you grew up not sitting cross-legged very often. Um, ancient texts will often, uh, not of any particular type, um, Chinese, Japanese, uh, the Hatha Yoga, Pradipika, um, the Pali Canon, they will often make a reference to sitting cross-legged um, in no small part because 2,500 years ago that was largely how people sat. Um, but there are two components to this notion of sitting cross-legged. Um, one is that the posture is required, that it's a necessity for meditation. Um, and that is absolutely not true. If you are more comfortable beginning your meditation practice sitting in a chair um, or sitting on the couch, that's perfectly okay. I would recommend that you generally prefer a stiffer seat. So if you have a chair with a back and a seat at a 90 degree angle, that's going to hold your spine a little straighter. It's just better for you physically um, to be sitting that way. But it doesn't particularly matter where you sit. And you can even meditate lying down. You can meditate while your eyes are open and you're walking around doing the dishes or something else relatively uninvolved. Um, that's not a replacement for sitting meditation. There is a reason to sit down and try to meditate in isolation. But when you do that, you don't have to sit cross-legged. The other side of sitting cross-legged is the fact that, I'm sitting cross-legged right now, um, the posture of sitting cross-legged is a triangle. And this becomes important later on in your meditation practice there will come a point, probably sooner than you think, where you will sit for meditation and you will not move. You will be completely still. There won't be a twitch in any muscle. There won't be any tension anywhere in your body. And you will sit for an hour or multiple hours without any tiny movement in the body, much less any gross movement, external movement. And it is much easier at that point to sit like that than, um, sorry, it is much easier to sit like that in a cross-legged posture, um, a triangle-shaped posture, than it is to sit in a chair. So I've tried to do this in a chair and it becomes quite difficult because in a chair, these tiny movements, um, kind of wobbling back and forth or your legs moving slightly, they become much easier for your body to slip into. Um, so as one muscle relaxes slightly, um, your, your legs may sh shift. And that tiny movement will actually disrupt your meditation because when your meditation is... Uh, such that your body is completely still, your mind is, is quite pointed. And so it will detect any tiny movement and you'll get quite shaken. It'll feel like an earthquake sometimes to have any movement in the body um, at that point. And um, this stage of meditation where you're not moving at all, externally or internally, um, you'll know that this is happening because the breath itself, which never stops, 
or even the heartbeat sometimes, um, become quite a disruption. They're, they really feel like they're shaking your body. Um, and so the breath and the heartbeat themselves also calm down. Um, but for now, in the beginning of our meditation practice, this does not matter so much. And there are plenty of meditators I've met over the years who will take long courses, uh, meditation courses, and will sit in a chair and they will sit unmoving in the chair because it is more comfortable for them or because they have an injury or because they have arthritis. Um, whatever the reason may be, they sit in a chair and sitting in a chair is perfectly fine. Um, and so, in this way, I hope that I'm drawing out the way in which sitting uh, cross-legged is important and is not important. Um, it is very unlike incense and uh, green tea and um, certain sounds and a certain environment and a special room and a special seat and all of those sorts of things. The reason for sitting cross-legged is exclusively this stability that it gives you, that later on in your meditation practice, you will be able to sit um, completely without any physical movement. Uh, that's all. There's nothing mystical or magical about sitting cross-legged, and ultimately, it's not even that important. I hope that this has been helpful for you, and I hope that you're taking care of yourself and your family. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Have a good Tuesday. Goodbye.